Good afternoon and welcome everybody to this new virtual briefing organized by the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Today we will be given a presentation by Joran Dijkman, FAO's Senior Officer on Livestock Sector Policy. And this presentation will focus on the global agenda of action. The global agenda of action focuses on how li the livestock sector can accommodate demand growth for livestock products within a context of growing resource scarcity. It aims to catalyze concrete multi-stakeholder action to achieve the sustainable improvement in resource use efficiency whilst ensuring the sector's contribution to food security and livelihood. Present right now, especially for the members of the Global Donor Platform's pastoralism and livestock thematic stream, when I say that we are very happy to have Jerome with us here today so that we can hear more from him about the setup and the focus of the initiative and get informed about next steps and who's actually involved in the Global Agenda for Action. So without further ado, I would therefore like to hand over to Jerome. We, he, uh, he will have around 15 minutes for his presentation and afterwards I will open the floor for discussion. Jerome, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Christian. Hello, everybody. Uh, I will move uh, immediately from the title slide to slide number two for the people on the telephone. Um, what, I'd like to, uh, what I'd like to talk to you about very briefly this afternoon is uh, to introduce uh, what the focus, the thematic focus of the Global Agenda of Action is. Um, and as you have already heard from Christian, it is on improving natural resource, resource use efficiency in the livestock sector. I'd like to clarify uh, the specific focus therein and the activities of the agenda and how we are trying to target the uh, change of practices um, at the, the field level and to update you on <clears throat> what the current status of the agenda is uh, in its uh, attempt to harness multi-stakeholder action and synergies. I'll move to slide number three. Why the agenda, you may ask, uh, given that there are already so many different initiatives uh, on livestock uh, in the world? Well, this particular initiative looks at uh, the ever-increasing clash between resource scarcity and demand growth, which is really having a profound effect on how the livestock sector is developing. And with that, it doesn't only look at, um, because of these developments, there's a potential uh, by the livestock sector to dramatically aggravate its impact on the environment, on public health and equity. At the same time, of course, as you all know, there's also the potential to dramatically improve the sector's contribution to environmental, public, social and economic health. Moving to slide number four. What is the agenda? Well, the agenda focuses on production. Uh, we all know that uh, sustainable consumption is, uh, is very important too. And there's some phenomenal estimates about food waste, but the agenda focuses on sustainable production. Um, it looks specifically at the, the rate of conversion of natural resources into livestock products and services. And whilst it does that, it's also cognizant of the fact that we need to capture the social, economic and health advantages of livestock. Um, the, because of the size and the complexity of the tasks uh, involved in this, we, the stakeholders have decided that this obviously requires multiple actions by multiple stakeholders to be able to address uh, the problems. Moving to slide number five. What does the agenda focus on? Well, within its broad theme of uh, natural resource use efficiency, stakeholders have decided to uh, focus on three uh, initial uh, foci. The first one, uh, the first uh, sub-team looks at uh, closing the efficiency gap and that really thinks about how one could use existing technology and existing institutional frameworks uh, much more, much better to generate large resource use efficiency, economic and social gains. And that is really looking at why it is that uh, some farms uh, in, within the same setting are far more efficient in their natural resource use efficiency than others and how this could be addressed. 
and this of course uh, is, is valid in uh, uh, not only uh, among systems but also between systems um, on the grassland side uh, we're looking at uh, payment for environmental services to uh, connect people in production systems uh, to raise productivity and to enhance livelihoods and that is really looking at how we could uh, make sure that the value of grassland uh, in its potential to um, contribute to for example carbon sequestration the provision of environmental services uh, could uh, could be um, could be used better the third, uh, the third uh, initial foci of the of the agenda looks at um, specifically at manure in intensive systems, and it looks at the recovery of nutrients and energy contained uh, to reduce nutrient overload uh, by manure produced in intensive systems, and to also reduce the greenhouse gas emissions uh, of uh, manure management. So those are the three initial uh, foci. As you can see, they also cover, uh, not necessarily willingly, but that's how it came out, the broad range of, uh, of, of livestock sector development uh, um, statuses, where we're looking at the efficiency gap, where we're really in transition economies, where livestock sector is growing, demand growth is growing. Grasslands, we're more at the marginal side. Uh, where there is no livestock revolution um, and then on the manure side we're in the very very intensive uh, system so it also covers in that sense the broad range of uh, of livestock sector situations that we find in the world okay moving to slide number six how does the the agenda work well the the agenda is, is open to everyone everyone who agrees to its objectives of working towards uh, um, enhancing resource use efficiency in the livestock sector. The decisions that are made are consensual um, and it's built on broad-based voluntary and informal stakeholder engagement. Um, we're not into blame games, we're not saying that one production is better or the other, we're looking at the direction of change. So, every, so we're looking at really to improve rather than to, um, to compare. Um, we're using uh, the do no harm principle in the sense that there's obviously there's many other issues uh, that need to be addressed in the livestock sector, but um, there are many other uh, many other uh, initiatives that that are dealing uh, with with these issues. But of course, it is important, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, to social issues, to welfare issues, uh, to have safeguards in place to ensure that uh, activities under the um, agenda do not uh, um, deteriorate situations um, and the stakeholders have decided that we could best address this by, by applying this do no harm principle. Um, the agenda is science based and uh, it is action oriented and it looks at uh, joint and separate actions by stakeholders that will lead to practice changes that improve resource use efficiency within the livestock sector. Moving to slide number seven. Um, what was the, does the agenda do? Well, initially, um, stakeholders have uh, agreed that uh, the main focus of the activities of the agenda are on uh, networking and informing stakeholders. So this is the, the network and inform is really about stimulating stakeholder interaction and collaboration. Uh, it's about enhancing access to and the choice of information and really looking at uh, ways to best link demand for knowledge and services to its supplier and suppliers. So that's really about linking demand and supply. The agenda also uh, is involved in analysis and guidance and here we're looking at uh, the development of harmonized metrics and methodologies. Uh, we're looking at specific uh, strategic sector guidance in the area of its competence and of course within that as well um, it looks to inform intergovernmental and other partnership processes. And then the, the final uh, concrete activity of the agenda is the catalyzation of concrete action 
where we're really looking to put uh, the concepts into practice through multi-stakeholder action. Moving to slide number eight. Who is involved and why? Well, as I've already said, uh, it's open to all sector stakeholders. Um, we have uh, representatives from, uh, from all walks of life, if you wish. We have intergovernmental organizations, private sector, civil society, academics, um, and uh, public sector, and various producer organizations and producers uh, that have uh, participated and are active members in the multi-stakeholder platform. Um, why are they involved? Well, uh, they people uh, and organizations like to be part of the of the multi-stakeholder platform of the agenda of action because uh, they feel it will provide them with better access to knowledge uh, and knowledge transmission, knowledge sharing in an area where there isn't really any other um, initiative that deals with that. Um, they feel it's important that uh, we come to shared understanding of the issues and solutions um, to build consensus, which will then lead to action. Obviously, um, an initiative like the multi-stakeholder uh, platform of the Global Agenda of Action is there to avoid duplication and making sure that we make best use of scarce resources and it is engaging all the relevant actors within the sector, which can lead <coughs> to informed decision-making and accelerated action. FAO uh, is just a stakeholder, uh, as all the other stakeholders in the agenda of action. Um, it hosts the secretariat upon the request of the multi-stakeholder platform, but specifically for FAO uh, is looking at this um, at the global, object, uh, global Agenda of Action because it thinks it can inform, guide, and enrich uh, FAO's intergovernmental processes. Moving to slide number nine. So where are we at the moment? Well, we've had uh, two multi-stakeholder platform meetings. We have had a, a number of uh, workshops. A uh, large number of people and organizations have uh, participated. Uh, and this consultation uh, continues and obviously uh, as we speak we hope that uh, many more of you who haven't joined yet uh, will be joining uh, but within the within this process of building the agenda what we have this far uh, achieved is that we have consensus about the nature of the initiative and the desired direction of change as i have uh, previously told you we've got consensus on the three focus areas and their initial programs of work. Um, we've had very strong buy-in from uh, many stakeholders and that has already led to joint messaging. For example, in the run-up to Rio Plus 20, the Global Agenda of Action had uh, participated in three specific meaning, uh, meetings that dealt with, um, with uh, sustainability and agriculture. And it was in that actually one of the very few um, activities within Rio Plus 20 that specifically looked at the livestock sector. Um, we have also uh, quite recently reached a consensus on the initial oversight mechanism, which again will work on the consensus basis and equitable representation of uh, stakeholder groupings and functional areas uh, within uh, the agenda. Um, so this is where we are in terms of uh, status. What is next? Well, um, as I said, we are uh, the secretariat uh, with the various uh, stakeholder clusters for the, for the specific sub-teams. Um, it's currently working hard on refining, on refining the, the various work programs. Um, and we're do, doing that all to come to a constituting meeting uh, which will be held in Nairobi. Um, this will be hosted by AU, IBAR and ILRI. Um, it will be held from the 22nd to the 24th of January with an optional field day, field visit day on the 25th of January. And there we uh, will, uh, the secretariat and the various stakeholder clusters will present the initial draft action programs uh, to the multi-stakeholder meeting for further discussion and endorsement. Um, we're looking to have a, a specific uh, section there on 
uh, stakeholder commitments, not so much in terms of money, but in terms of action. Um, and of course, we're using, we will use this meeting um, to create further buy-in into the objectives and the optic uh, activities uh, of the agenda. So that's what I think has been 15 minutes, uh, is what I very briefly wanted to tell you. So looking forward to your questions and thanks very much for listening. Thank you very much uh, for this interesting presentation, Jeroen, and for explaining the background, uh, the structure and the objectives of the Global Agenda for Action yeah. to, uh, to us in su such a short time. I am sure there are a whole lot of questions coming in uh, right now, and I would like to open the, the floor for discussion and the Q&A session. I have some questions on the Nairobi meet after uh, the meeting we had in Bern together with uh, Henning. Uh, we had some requests uh, from various participants who would like to join the Nairobi meeting. For instance, the TAFS uh, Foundation, which would like to, to present the newly developed uh, Livestock Disease Atlas and uh, bring in uh, the, the animal health aspect in this uh, platform. I think the FAO was also involved. Then uh, we discussed with Pierre, uh, together with uh, Unique and Andy Wilkes, we have done a study in Mongolia on the potential of carbon sequestration in degraded uh, pasture land. And we will have a, a final report ready for January, and that may be interesting to discuss that. And further on, we are interested to discuss a little bit more detail uh, the uh, RICE tool for uh, sustainability assessment. Will there be uh, room for such uh, inputs or how do you uh, think this uh, uh, meeting will happen? Okay, thank you, Fritz. Um, well, first of all, uh, I'd like to, to restate that um, you know everybody is open to join and everybody is uh, is uh, free to participate. So, so the invite for the Nairobi meeting goes out to all. And the Nairobi meeting is not going to be uh, a traditional meeting in the sense of lots of presentations, uh, lots of uh, lots of panels, because we're really looking at uh, at launching and constituting the the global agenda of action. Um, so we're going to have uh, a ceremonial part on on the first day with a couple of high level panels that look at the the clash between um, resource scarcity and demand growth with specific reference to the to the livestock sector. And then the following days are going to be a grand tour of of the the issues and options. Uh, uh, related to the global agenda of action, uh, its various uh, and its various sub teams, and then the, the third day is really going to be a, a, a workshopy day where we're going to be uh, discussing and refining the various draft action programs and um, the, um, the the proposals for for oversight and and uh, communication and mechanisms. So that that is very broadly the um, the outline we're working with uh, at the moment. That doesn't mean to say, of course, that uh, um, you know we, we don't provide the platform to share the outcomes of studies. And and I think that is also one of the one of the things where we where the where the, where the global agenda of action need to develop much much more. Um, and that is to provide uh, also the platform uh, for people to share outcomes of study and. Uh, studies and to provide a platform for specific issues to be discussed, be it within the within the in the focus uh, areas or on the global agenda of action in uh, in general. And this is again something uh, which which we're working on. So so I think um, whilst whilst I think that at the moment the, the, the sort of the room for uh, you know for everybody to have his own. Uh, its own little presentation at uh, at Nairobi um, is is not really on the cards. I think what we will have is is other means of making sure uh, that the outcomes of these uh, of these types of studies, um, the outcomes um, or new initiatives, uh, that they are uh, incorporated and shared with the broader 
uh, with a broader uh, platform so that they do become indeed sort of part of the discussions that will be ongoing in uh, Nairobi. Hi, uh, this is uh, Katrin from the Netherlands. Um, I'm, uh, I was in the Livestock Futures Conference in Bonn uh, where this uh, topic was also discussed. And um, I don't. And Henning Steinfeld was also there. And uh, the idea was to uh, stimulate participation of uh, smallholder livestock organizations in this uh, GAA process. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Jeroen in uh, what kind of support mechanisms uh, would be there to enable these uh, smallholder farmer organizations representatives to participate in this Nairobi meeting and to voice their concerns and ideas, because I think that can really strengthen the whole process. Thank you, Catherine, for your question. Um, well, it is, it is indeed a, a concern that, that we have uh, thought about a, a great deal, and it's also something which we've been, been working on. First of all, um, we already have a number of uh, producer organizations such as the World Farmer Organization um, and there's various others on board. But the, the issue of having actual smallholder uh, representation at, um, at the various multi-stakeholder meetings, the question then of, comes, of course becomes who goes. I mean, uh, picking one or two smallholders from uh, country B um, doesn't necessarily help anything and, and this is quite often what this kind of representation boils down to. So what we're working on within the global agenda is uh, with a number of, uh, <coughs> with a number of uh, NGOs, um, international NGOs that, that, and, and local NGOs uh, that work with uh, smallholder farmer groups, um, trying to set up a mechanism uh, not only of, uh, of representation but also of training and making sure that if we do get people to participate that they, uh, that they can actually participate effectively rather than just be there. Um, and to also set up a mechanism um, that uh, for these, the, the people that are elected to uh, participate at the larger meeting to have the possibility to thereafter, uh, the possibility and the mechanisms to thereafter report back um, to their broader membership. Now, um, obviously, this this is something that costs money. Uh, it is a it is a mechanism that doesn't exist that needs to be set up. It's also a mechanism, of course, um, of of smallholder representation uh, within international uh, within international initiatives. Is something that can be set up for not just for the global agenda of action, but also for other similar uh, initiatives. So we're writing a specific proposal for that. Um, we don't have money uh, at the moment to finance something like that, but we're writing a specific proposal for that with the, uh, in collaboration with, um, with the NGOs uh, and civil society I mentioned before. And we hope to be able to, uh, uh, by doing that, uh, to be able to set up this mechanism and to ensure the type of participation and representation that you refer to, Catherine. Now, in terms of um, that, obviously, is not going to be up and running by the time of the Nairobi meeting. Um, for the Nairobi meeting, um, we are uh, going to be sort of slightly more um, opportunistic, and we will have uh, some money available to uh, to get uh, smallholder organisations, both from uh, the Indian subcontinent and sub-Saharan. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa uh, represented, uh, and this this we will again do um, in uh, in close consultation with the same uh, same NGOs. Um, so this is where we are at uh, in in that respect. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I do apologize because this is uh, the first of such briefings, so probably you may I might be uh, addressing some issue that you already been discussing. Uh, First of all, thank you very much for the presentation, which nevertheless trying to uh, structureize, to give a structure to the to the old dialogue. <clears throat> uh, but uh, I have some concerns, I have some questions. Um, um, 
since obviously we need then to give a very practical approach and uh, applicable approach to the whole exercise, my first question is um, how come the initial foci, I acknowledge they are initial, but um, how the three selected foci are mainly, I would say, technical, while we know that today most of the challenges, are especially, especially when we deal with the feeding, with the natural resource, with the environment, with poverty reduction, they are mainly uh, socio-economical. Uh, obviously, we have to give a lot of dimension to that. Um, I think um, I think I would disagree that it's uh, it's mainly technical. Uh, yes, um, on the on the in the first one, closing the efficiency gap, it looks obviously at the the application of uh, of existing technology, but the the answer in in actually um, in actually achieving that isn't so much uh, in in the technology, but it's a, it's it's obviously a, a social and institutional question. The second uh, the second part, uh, the second um, thematic foci on uh, restoring value to grasslands. Well, there you're obviously dealing with uh, with areas of um, of communal tenure, uh, and again. Um, whilst there are obviously technical technical uh, issues related to that, the actual focus area deals mainly with uh, the institutional frameworks and solutions that need to be uh, that will be required to ensure that people can improve their livelihood by actually changing um, or valuing their production and their production systems differently, not just in terms of uh, livestock production anymore. But in terms of contribution to environmental maintenance, uh, to carbon sequestration, um, the third one, uh, again, uh, it looks uh, it, it looks at uh, at obviously at the application of technology. But again, I think the, 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 these types this question can also not be answered uh, in the absence of dealing with the uh, with the socio-economic and particularly health issues that uh, that are uh, deeply. Um, integrated within this question. So I, I don't think uh, that we're talking about uh, a strictly uh, technology agenda. I, I perfectly agree with the reply. So probably a, a suggestion could be to rephrase in a more, let's say, economic, social economic oriented uh, uh, approach the three foresight. Because again, for example, when you speak about grass, grassland, obviously is a, a huge, huge issue of uh, land using and the access and so on, uh, conflict and so on. So uh, the, the answer is fine, uh, but probably uh, the spelling out of the three foresight could reflect more uh, uh, your same concern that you just uh, mentioned. Um, the second question is uh, uh, you presented very briefly um, in your talk, <clears throat> uh, but it's not very much highlighted in the in the in the presentation. <clears throat> How the system and the regional approach uh, will be strengthened because it's a fundamental then again to be able to identify applicable uh, um, recommendation. Thank you. Well, the. Um well, obviously, m many of the uh, of the issues are, are per se already restricted to to one or two two areas uh, within the world. But uh, again, the uh, we are striving towards uh, making sure that we have um, that we have present representation in stakeholders from all the regions, and we're doing relatively well in that. Um, and of course, uh, the importance. Uh, and solutions, if you wish, for each of these uh, thematic foci will be different uh, in every region and in every country. But this is again uh, uh, where I think uh, when you think when you talk about practical action on the ground and practice change, um, this is the the principle we're working on, and this will automatically take care of that. Um, but as I said, we are uh, notwithstanding that we're making sure that we have. Uh, that we have representation uh, from each of the from each of the main regions uh, within the world. Um, we have uh, something like 300 members at the moment. We've had uh, 
quite large participation uh, at the various um, actual physical meetings. And there we've had representation uh, from all the from all the main regions in the world as well. So I, I mean, I I I hear your concern, but I don't think it's uh, it's in practice uh, been a been a problem uh, so far. What you say is fine, but we would agree that in a meeting, number one is uh, uh, um, meaningful representation, but also to structure to structure the the country vision because. I mean, all of us, we have seen many meetings with very good uh, um, participation, but then when was the time to distillate uh, what to do next uh, was more hard. So just my concern, uh, and, and I can hear that you're also very sensible to that, is in that direction. But, but Maro, I mean, just to, just to respond to that, I mean, I, mean, I, I hear your concerns, but uh, you know, this, we, we're working here on the, on the basis of consensus, and um, obviously we're looking at uh, at stakeholder action. Um, so um, everybody is free to join. We're facilitating, uh, for example, specific countries and specific types of organisations uh, to be able to participate. Uh, but then in the end. You know, this is this is about uh, the agenda of action, facilitating and catalyzing and providing the right types of information, doing the brokering and linking uh, between organisations, linking activities with the uh, required funding. Um, so it's it's. I mean, it sounds very much as if you think that this is an FAO initiative. It's not. It's it's a stakeholder initiative. It has to be stakeholder led, because. Uh, you know, the rubber hits the road when there's practice change in, by stakeholders. So we can facilitate that, but it's not uh, FAO who's implementing this uh, this program. Jeroen explained already the focus we have on efficiency, pasture and manure. Uh, my question is how uh, do we have to prioritize also maybe uh, areas or regions or uh, sectors? I mean, uh, all kinds of animal sectors. Uh, in the meeting in, in Nairobi, or what is exactly the the, the agenda? Uh, what what is the the goal? Uh, what our outcome will be? How uh, how practical will it be, or how uh, concrete it will be? Okay, thanks, Rina. Um, what we what we have been working on uh, over the over the past months uh, with with various uh, smaller groups of, of stakeholders is is to uh, further develop. The, uh, the draft action programs for the for each of the uh, for each of the areas um, for each of the, the thematic foci uh, that were that were developed during the, the specific workshops for each of these uh, for each of these uh, uh, foci. Um, so we will we will um, those draft uh, action programs will be. Will be ready by uh, come the the end of November when we will circulate them, pre-circulate them to all the members of the stakeholder platform uh, for comments uh, and uh, inf information. Um, and we will also uh, circulate at that time the various uh, proposals uh, for oversight uh, and communication uh, strategies. Um, and so the the meeting uh, the meeting in Nairobi is really to uh, to present uh, the final drafts of these uh, of these these action programs um, to discuss and finalize uh, finalize them um, and also um, another part of it uh, of of the meeting will be very much looking at uh, at, at setting stakeholder commitments um, towards. Uh, resource use efficiency. So, for example, what we're looking for and what we're discussing with with, uh, uh, with various stakeholders uh, when it comes to the area that you just mentioned, the manure side. Okay, um, you know, CP will, uh, in its big operations, will s s sort of move towards uh, copper slurry pits. I mean, it's, it's these types of uh, of declarations and commitments uh, that that we are uh, that we're looking for, and those declarations will also be made on the basis of uh, of, a, of a developed set of criteria that that all uh, stakeholders uh, adhere to. So, 
So in terms of uh, the practicalities, after the, after the meeting in Nairobi, um, we will uh, really start hitting the road with, uh, with, with the action programs. Now, obviously, um, the, the issue in itself, of course, uh, uh, already to a large extent, determines uh, the, the areas of the world where, where these are main problems. If you think about manure, uh, we're obviously thinking about, uh, I'm not saying that it's not a problem somewhere else, but if you look at, if you would look at the priority areas, Southeast Asia, of course, is, uh, is an area that, that immediately comes to mind. Um, if you think about um, restoring value to grassland, well, the, the areas that come to, to mind immediately are very much uh, Sub-Saharan Africa uh, and South and Central Asia. If you think about uh, uh, efficiency gap uh, issues, then we're looking uh, very much at uh, um, with a focus on 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 emerging economies. Um, so so yes, I mean I, I don't think uh, I don't think we we will go to the extent of of actually saying okay we'll have to we'll have to focus the first uh, activities there. But it's obviously just by the nature of the of the of the focus. Um, it's already uh, prioritizing certain areas, uh, certain and certain regions of the world for those activities. I just wanted to raise the principle of do no harm, and I'd like to know, in terms of the well-being of farm animals, how would you define that, and how well, you know, how do you plan to define that? Because you know, it might be that there would be somebody who would think it's okay to do a particular thing to an animal or bear it in a particular way. Whereas, you know, people who are well versed in animal welfare might think that actually that was completely unethical and all wrong. So, how, how will you kind of define the do no harm? Hi, Wendy. Thank, thanks for your question. On um, with specific reference to uh, animal welfare, uh, we are in the process of developing uh, a set of, uh, of, or a set of due diligence uh, assessment uh, for activities related to the global agenda of action. Um, we're developing those in uh, collaboration with some of the large animal welfare uh, organisations that there are in the world, um, and. Um, we have now we got a, a specific uh, draft uh, that we have developed, and as you may know, uh, FAO has got a has got a large community of practice which uh, interacts with uh, most of the animal welfare stakeholders in the world, and we will be submitting uh, that draft uh, due diligence assessment for. Uh, for uh, animal welfare to this uh, to this community for their comments suggestions um, and following that um, we will refine and uh, rework uh, the draft and which will then be presented um, as a as one of the one of the many items in the working group sessions uh, for discussion uh, to the multi stakeholder platform uh, for discussion and endorsement so this is how we are working on operationalizing the do no harm principle when it comes to uh, to animal welfare. But we're also doing the same thing for, for other issues uh, and, and that we direct directly addressing. Thank you. I would like uh, to close the discussion at this point and uh, thank all participants for their time and especially Jerome for this interesting presentation on the global ag agenda of action. The presentation was very interesting and we learned a lot about uh, the setup of the global agenda of action and we will follow the development in the future. Okay, so then once more thank you very much uh, Jerome. Um, I would uh, hand over the floor for some last words uh, to you. No, well, uh, and I, I'll take that opportunity then to say why I think it, the, or why we think and why stakeholders think the agenda matters. Well, like uh, we've been discussing, the thematic focus, which is 
uh, quite unique in that there is no other uh, global initiative that, that looks at this. But it's also really offering strong synergies between social and economic gains and environmental impact reduction, which are really, um, when we think about it, some of the, the pressing issues of our time. Why it matters as well is because we're looking at changing in practices, and that is really built on the sense of urgency to know, um, to put what we know into practice. And of course, um, it is looking at, uh, at making sure that we, that we, we reap the benefits of the value added of multi-stakeholder engagement and where uh, the convergence of interest and action will really translate into, into change on the ground. So with that, I'd like to thank you all again for, uh, for listening in. Uh, for those of you who haven't, uh, who haven't joined the multi-stakeholder platform yet, please do. Info at livestockdialogue.org. Um, we don't have any membership registrations. You join and you will be sent all the information and, uh, that, uh, that we deal with and all the documents that I've been talking about as they, uh, as they emerge. So I look forward to interacting with you all in future. And please do also come to Nairobi where uh, we will have a very interesting meeting. Thank you, Christian, for giving me this opportunity and uh, see you all soon.